1975 had a lot of Atari arcade games being released. Now, I didn't realise you had to download the ROMs for the games to work properly in the emulator. The games kind of work without them, but really aren't worth playing. Look at the difference here! Lord almighty! Anti-Aircraft was a two-player game from dear old Atari, where two players competed to shoot down aircraft. Fire 1 and 2 fired the shots in slightly different directions. The aim was, of course, to shoot down more than the other person. I can imagine this one being quite fun, though it leaves a lot up to luck. Jet Fighter without the ROM is… broken. You steer left and right which makes the aircraft suddenly change 90 degrees. Just look at it! However, with the ROM it becomes one of the best games yet. You have smooth steering, recognisable planes on the screen and fun dogfights. It would pass as a flash game today. Shark Jaws was a game made because they couldn't get the rights to the title Jaws. Without the ROM, there are just three different sized blocks on the screen, but once fixed it looks okay. It's alright, but won't have any long term appeal to any creature more advanced than a goldfish. Crash and Score was a destruction derby game. It's a really nice idea, where you must race to get to the flashing icon to get the points listed on it. Hit one that isn't flashing however, and you slow to a crawl. These games are becoming more advanced now, and are quite a bit of fun to play if you have somebody to play with. Things looked up on the mainframe front as well, with Plato leading the way once again. Yep, the same one that had the 30 player multiplayer game released two years ago. What an incredible system. Some Dungeons and Dragons based games were released named Pedit 5 and DND. These games were run on the mainframe computer, then played in terminals, one per person. The games were later refined and became quite advanced for its time. Look, a person! There were numerous other similar games released for the system, including Moria, which included a rather fancy splash screen. The beginnings of text adventures started in 1975 as well. A game named Dungeon had advanced features including NPC line of sight calculations. For reference, various iterations of the game were released, the third being Zork, a text adventure in the 80s. Gunfight was the first arcade game that portrayed human versus human combat. Controversial! Ban this sick filth! Though I'm not sure if these games could even be offensive. Maybe a person would turn red if shot. Gah! And that's about it. The second generation of games was about to begin in 1976, which I'll cover next time. Who knows what it would bring to the table? Thank you for watching.